Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What seems to be overrated, until you actually try it. I cannot emphasize this enough, a quality pillow. And mattress, and sheets. My ex got mad at me when I spent almost 2 Kelvin on my whole bed setup but then has no problems with $100 bar tabs and $200 dinner nights out. My people, you spend 8 hours a night, 3000 hours a year on your bed. It should be the most expensive, or just best quality regardless of price, item you purchase for your home. Anything less is just cheating yourself. That sounds like my ex. He's go to the bar 3x a week and swore we didn't have money for allergen-free detergent I needed. I spent two weeks in the hospital getting EEGs and MRIs done came home to the biggest pizza box graveyard I'd ever seen. I was the one who did the grocery shopping and I promise you that fridge and freezer was full. He could have cooked himself dyers instead of spending $50 forward slash night on beer and takeout. Tailored clothing, you can have just about any body shape but when you have it tailored to your actual size you go from looking okay to looking amazing. Adding on to this, I like to wear denim. Specifically Levi's denim, it's expensive buying new and being a tall guy makes it tough. I go to thrift shops and pick up a pair for $15 one size too big, bring it to a tailor and have it hemmed for $15 best fit and so durable. I've had people ask me how I can afford it with my income and when I tell them they always say the same thing that's a great idea. I also have a big chest and wide shoulders, so the denim jackets rarely fit right. So I find some that are too big and get them fixed. Edit, yes I wear a Canadian tuxedo most days, and I'm proud of it. Can confirm. I am a tall, overweight woman with long limbs, a short torso, and a belly. I can buy off the rack but very little fits right. I now exclusively wear clothes custom made for me, and literally, people stop me on the street to compliment my attire and all where I got it. I feel better because I look better. And perhaps partly because of that, I've managed to make gradual changes that resulted in losing some of the weight. When you don't hate looking at yourself, it's easier to act loving toward yourself. Drinking water. It's amazing how much better I feel when I consciously choose to drink more water. Our forward slash hydra homies. Our forward slash water riggers is back. Actual running shoes, some shoes are meant for running man. If you can find a good running shoe shop that does proper gait analysis, it's well worth it. They will have you run on a treadmill with a camera watching your foot fall then they watch it back in slow motion and point out how your foot lands, then go through a bunch of shoes to find ones that compensate for it. This will make running way better for you and much more comfortable too. The military did a big study on gait analysis and found there was no conclusive evidence to support it. What they found was more useful was just finding shoes people found comfortable. Edit, here's one study. HTTPS academic.oop.com forward slash milmed forward slash article dash pdf forward slash 180 forward slash 3321 forward slash 2186 1944 forward slash milmed d minus 14 minus 0 0 337 pdf. I believe there was one other major one, having trouble finding it though. Seconding this, I got nice shoes after buying from Payless my whole life. They are not even running shoes but I went from a quarter mile run at most to a mile and still climbing thanks to these shoes. And no shin splints anymore. I thought to look at the starry sky is boring but in fact it is very beautiful. When I was a child my dad taught me about the constellations and bird watching. He said if you know the stars and birds you will never be bored wherever you go. He was right. Also, plants. Once I started learning to identify them, I was amazed by how many different species of wildflowers are just everywhere. Getting a good massage. I was almost 30 and had never had one before, and I didn't really care to anyway, but my girlfriend found a deal for a couple's massage on Grupo at some shitty hole in the wall place, so we went. It was a terrible massage and I left feeling worse than when I came in. I thought my apathy towards massages had been confirmed. A while later my back was really hurting so I decided to maybe give it one more shot at a nicer place. This time it was amazing and so peaceful I almost fell asleep. I walked out the door with no back pain and feeling completely refreshed. I'm glad I gave it a second chance. A bad massage will make you wish you'd left bad enough alone. A good massage will make you wonder why you didn't get one sooner.
A great massage will find incipient problems you didn't know you had so you can work on fixing them before they hurt. And a great one usually costs no more than a good one. A great massage will find incipient problems you didn't know you had so you can work on fixing them before they hurt. And a great one usually costs no more than a good one. And occasionally are covered by insurance. My US insurance covers 45 a year. I know when I was growing up, SGIO in Australia was offering massage covered by insurance, so it isn't just a USA thing either. I've been to probably 60 to 70 LMT, licensed massage therapists, over the past 15 years. The best have been ones where they are either making too much money from massage to do other things and have let their other qualifications lapse, or are qualified in multiple areas and are focusing on X for this particular day effectively they are multi-talented but are doing a lesser job in the moment. My favorite one right now let her physical therapy qualifications lapse and specializes in Swedish massage, where she will offer a Swedish massage but if you have particular kinds of ailments she'll blend it with her pint training. My second favorite over the years was a lady who practiced both Swedish and Thai massage, or as I like to describe it, stretching with friends, where the Swedish massage would be accompanied with elements of Thai massage as needed. Confession, I have no idea how to tell which are the legit places and which are the rub and tugs, so I've never gone. In Canada I'm pretty sure the tub and tuggers aren't registered massage therapists. I've seen a few such places that advertise exotic massage on sketchy sandwich board signs, but every legit massage therapy clinic I've used both says registered massage therapy, and each employee's business card has RMT. After their name and a diploma on the wall. If you have health insurance, you could always ask them what massage clinics in the area are covered under their plans, even if your plan doesn't cover massage therapy. They have probably vetted the places they're willing to pay for people to visit. Sleep. Nutrition. Hydratio. Believe me when I say this. It's a cold, dark world until you tune those three together. Edit, thanks for the blig everyone. I had no idea this would blow up. Thank you. I'll respond if I can. I said this on a whim, but I mean it. Nutrition, check. Hydratio, check. Sleep, cries in Marine Corps. I ate like garbage in the Marines. Drank alcohol every day, tobacco, never slept. I feel you. I want to get healthier now that I'm out but I don't know where to start. Thanks, I really think I needed to hear this. Same. The thing is, I know I need to focus on it more, and when I don't, I wonder why I feel so shitty all the time haha. Good headphones. You'll hear little nuances in music you've heard hundreds of times before but didn't notice. On this note, any form of a good sound system. When my husband and I were in high school we had extra time and money because, no responsibility. We both put good sound systems in our cars. He's an electrical engineer now go figure, and loved engineering sound systems that would be really great for each of our cars. It was like a freaky dream come true. I loved getting in my car for my commute to work every morning because listening to music in there was unlike anything else. We sold my car and his is now just a toy, it's a jeep, so neither of us have great sound systems now and it really is sad. The first time I ever heard a good surround sound system I was frick eye blown away. One of my friends growing up came from a wealthy family that had a home theater, I brought my Xbox over and we played Halo 3 on it. I could feel the explosions and the vibrations from the vehicles zooming by, and it was crazy to me how the vehicles that were behind my character actually sounded like they were behind me. It felt like I was actually there. Hiring Movers I used to pride myself in my moves, but that was just me and my stuff from one bedroom to another. When I got married, we started renting our own apartments and the stuff accumulated over the years. When we moved to NYC we hired my buddy's moving company and it was amazing. When we moved apartments the next year, we hired another company and it was so nice not having to move a single thing up the stairs. We have not moved in six years now and I hope we won't have to anytime soon, but we will 100% pay the extra hundreds of dollars to not schlep couches and dresses. Hudo percent my friend. Having moved apartments four times and hating every single minute of it I decided when I bought my house that I would pay a company to do it. The $300 I paid was so worth it. Just the thought of having to move all of my stuff now gets me irritated. $300. To move a house full of stuff. That's a great deal. Two monitors for your computer. 
Once you go to, you'll never go back. Edit, for all those asking I do 3D art. Two monitors when unwrapping in 3ds Max is a must. I also work a lot with Photoshop at the same time with Max files, plus I look at PDFs and other references while working on projects, along with Firefox for YouTube, online references etc. I have three and can barely use two now. The improvement from one, two is far greater than two, three. I like three, but I need two.